Hey guys, welcome to another review video. In today's video, I'm reviewing a plugin called Cinematch from a company called Film Convert. And what this plugin allows you to do is to color match multiple cameras to look like it was shot on the one camera. For example, for this intro, I'm shooting on my Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera and also my trusty old GH4 camera. And as you know, they're two very different cameras. I've got all my settings in camera exactly the same from color temperature to roughly the same exposure. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use Cinematch to color match, or you could do it another way and spend maybe a couple hours um, trying to tweak the colors around. And it gets tricky when you have more than two cameras to color match. This plugin is incredible for saving a lot of time doing multicam edits. So let's turn on the computer and open up DaVinci Resolve and let me show you how to color match using the Cinematch plugin. So before I open up DaVinci Resolve, I just wanted to tell you that you can download a free trial of this plugin from the Cinematch website, which I'll be putting links in the description below so you can follow along with this video or see if this plugin is right for you. At the moment, there is a 20% off deal, so you can purchase this plugin for $159 instead of $199 or you can purchase the Cinematch bundle for $239. If you're not sure if your camera is supported in this plugin, you can have a look at the camera list on their website. And if your camera is not on their camera support list, you can request a camera for a potential future update. So I would recommend following their social media accounts to keep up to date with future updates. And of course, you can learn more about Cinematch on their website. I've just opened up DaVinci Resolve 17 and I've loaded in my clips. I've got my Blackmagic Pocket 4K clip right here and also my GH4 footage. And as you can see, they're very different looking clips. One's a bit more warmer and this one's quite cooler. So there's a couple of ways you can add Cinematch to your clips inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. You can be in the edit tab and you can go over to open effects and you can scroll all the way down till you see Cinematch or you can type it in. And then you can click and drag Cinematch over to your clip and you can go to the Inspector tab and do it this way. But you can't use all the features that Cinematch has to offer, so I would recommend not doing that and going to the Color tab instead. So you go over to Open Effects and scroll all the way down to Cinematch and we're just going to add it to our clips. And now I've added Cinematch to both of the clips, the Blackmagic Raw and the GH4. So as you can see, there's a pop-up window and you can click and drag it around your screen here. If you were to do this in the edit tab, you wouldn't be able to click through and make adjustments using this little pop-up window here. So I wouldn't recommend going into the edit tab and using it that way. All you can do in the edit tab with this pop-up window is just click and drag. So I wouldn't recommend that. So before I start making any adjustments, I just want to show you what's inside of Cinematch. So you've got Sensor Match. This is where you're telling the plugin which camera you're using and what you want it to look like. You've also got primary correction, so you're able to just make some exposure adjustments, color temperature, tint, and all of that sort of stuff. You've also got export and licenses, so you can export the LUT once you're finished with it. You've got overlay parameters. Uh, you can adjust your levels, your black points, your wheels, your saturation, um, your shadows, midtones, and highlights. You can do all of that inside of this without having to create a whole bunch of nodes, which is really handy. And then just looking at the uh, pop-up window here, I'm just going to make it bigger. And we've got HSL curves, so we've got hue, saturation, and luminance. We can go in and do some RGB curves and color wheels. I mean, you can pretty much do this all here inside of DaVinci Resolve. You've got your wheels, you've got curves, and you've got your qualifier. But it's really nice to have it all in sort of one plugin, just so you don't have to do multiple nodes. So I'm just going to make this smaller. You know what, let's just turn this off for now and make sure that we're on the Blackmagic Raw clip, which is this one right here. So we just want to start with Sensor Match. This is where we choose our camera source profile. So we'll just click that. And we're telling the plugin that we shot this on a Blackmagic Design, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, Film Gen 4, and I'm just going to leave it at full. You've got two options between limited and full, but since I shot this in raw, I'm just going to leave this at full. Click apply. And right underneath, we've got choose camera target profile. This is where we tell the plugin that we want it to look like a certain camera. So since we want this to be a Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera, we can actually just leave this blank. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna choose Blackmagic Design and just do Pocket Camera 4K and just leave it again and nothing's happened. And I'm just gonna click apply Rec. 709 transform. And now we've got our Blackmagic camera 
in a Rec. 709 transform. So, so another really cool thing is if you are just using a Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera and you want it to look like that you shot it on a red camera, you can just go back to choose camera target profile and we can just choose any other camera. So let's just go to red and I'm just gonna leave it at red dragon and I'm just gonna change this to full and I'm gonna click apply. So as you can see, it's changed the colors slightly and it looks like I've now shot this footage on a Red Dragon cinema camera instead of a Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera 4K. And then I'm just gonna bring it back to Blackmagic Design for this review slash tutorial. And I'm just gonna bring it, yep, 4K, yep, yep, all good. Rec. 709. And then I'm just gonna go over to the GH4 clip and I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing. I'm just gonna go to the sensor match and I'm just gonna choose the camera source since I shot this on the GH4. I'm gonna go down to Panasonic GH4 Vlog L and then I'm going to leave it at limited just because it's not raw and then I'm going to choose the camera target profile and I'm just going to select Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera because that's what I want it to look like uh, yeah that's looking good and before I click apply just have a look at this image here and you'll see that it has done a bit of a color shift what it's doing is it's basically doing a sensor match you're telling the plugin that, hey, I've shot this on the GH4, but I want it to look and have the same characteristics as the sensor of a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. And um, yeah, so that's basically what it's doing. And I'm just going to click Apply Rec. 709 Transform. Overall, the characteristics of the lens, we've got the dynamic range from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and it's kind of mimicked it pretty well, but obviously we have to do some more adjustments. So there's a couple of ways we can adjust the image to get it looking correct. So I'm just going to first adjust the exposure because the GH4 is a little bit bright. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. We can just double check false color exposure, middle gray. And we, and we do the same thing for the Blackmagic Pocket 4K clip. And you can use this to adjust your middle grays to look exactly the same. That's actually looking pretty good there. And then you can do the same thing with false color exposure for skin tones, uh, false color color temperature. You can also adjust the false color tint where you can adjust the tint between the magenta and greens to do some further adjustments if you need to. I would recommend doing it this way if you are using something like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro when it comes out for Final Cut Pro. And I'm going to be showing you another way to do this for all the DaVinci Resolve users that are potentially going to be using this plugin. And I find it to be much quicker and easier. So I'm just gonna to go to the first clip and I'm gonna grab a still, right click and grab a still, and then make sure the gallery is checked. And I'm going to right click on the gallery. I'm gonna to go to my GH4 clip first, right click on the gallery and play still. And now um, we've got an image wipe. You can just toggle that on and off at the top left over here bring it over. I usually like to just zoom in. Let's just click and drag. So I just want to bring the line so it's lining up against my face and my jumper and my pants and a little bit of the green leaves just so we get a good reference. You'll see that in the waveform it makes the adjustments there so you have a bit of a visual on your scopes and then we can use the exposure and we can just eyeball it. We can use the scopes as well and that's actually looking pretty good right there. I've also noticed that there's a bit more saturation in the Blackmagic Pocket 4K clip. So let's just scroll down and let's just adjust our saturation. I like to have the saturation at roughly 150 as like a good starting point. And you can go back and forth and tweak it even further. The reference still has a bit of purple in it. So I'm just gonna go down to temperature and adjust the tint to be a bit more magenta. And then you can also use the temperature as well to adjust the color temperature even more. This is actually looking pretty decent. I'm just going to go and zoom in and just check this tree. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, there's still some more adjustments that I need to do, especially in the skin tone. So we can go in here and isolate different sources. So I'm just going to go over to our open effects. And I'm just going to click source, the little eyedropper tool. And then I'm just going to hover over my skin tone and click it. And then we can go in and we can push our skin tones. This is our hue. So this is pretty much adjusting the color shift. So obviously we don't want it to be too much. So maybe around here. 
is looking pretty good. And then I'm going to go over to saturation and then you can adjust the saturation a bit more. I can probably dial it back just a little bit, the saturation. I can also go over to luminance and adjust the luminance as well. Probably go just a little bit brighter in the skin tones just a bit. And I'm fairly happy with that. Another thing that I can do is if you need to adjust more colors, let's just go back to image wipe and we can go over to our jeans here because the blue is just a little bit off. So let's just go over to open effects and I'm just going to move this over here and I'm going to go to source and I'm just going to click here. It saves your skin tone red points over here. And then you've also got another dot here, which is for our jeans. So we can go over to luminance and adjust the luminance as well. But we should probably go to hue first and you can adjust the hue this way. And then go to saturation, bring the saturation down a bit. So that's how you use Film Convert's Cinematch plugin inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. As you can see, this is an incredible plugin that can save you a lot of time with color matching between multiple clips and different cameras. Yeah, I would highly recommend that any video editors out there that are looking for a quick and easy way to color match multiple clips across multiple different camera types and manufacturers, you should go and download this plugin, at least the trial version. I'll be putting a link in the description below to go to their website, download the free trial or even purchase it and you'll be able to see for yourself how well this plugin works. Yeah, if you guys found this video helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.